Hello everyone and welcome to another ET Newsroom presentation and this time it's with Peter Vincent, our dowsing detective. Now I went to join Peter up in Tunbridge Wells to hear what his findings were about the Cleopatra burial or tomb location. Now he'd done a lot of work with this some years ago with his colleague Alan Hayde as well, so I thought it was worth putting on the record to share with you what he'd found and you can see what your thoughts are about that. Now Peter, as usual, shares his findings no matter what the case, whether it involves police, the authorities, archaeological and otherwise, different nations, so everybody who needs to be informed and who is involved, they will have this information. The Secret Services, MI5, MI6, and anybody else, they will know. So Peter has some very interesting stories related to things ET, which we'll share on, on another video of something he told me just today, the 26th of June, 2023, that I will share with you when I have him to camera, perhaps, or maybe I'll record our phone call about those ET events. Meanwhile, we'll also do another short video on a follow-up to the Nicola Bully case, to Madeleine McCann, and on the girl who said she was Madeleine McCann as a young adult, and also of the submersible. And there are a couple of other events that I want to share with you that we recorded whilst I had him with me. So back to Cleopatra, and you can let me know what you think. Enjoy, and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Hello everyone, this is the ET Newsroom, and it is the 11th of June 2023. I'm with Peter Vincent, we're in Calverley Grounds, and we thought we'd bring a whole pile of papers and maps and images to share with you and spread them out on this table here. However, we've got a light breeze going on, and so we're not able to do it. We've already tried, and it is just going everywhere. So I'm going to get Peter to do an intro for us and just tell us what we're going to do. Now we're out of the wind, we'll have a look at what Peter has to show us. We're sorting out the clear Patra photographs and images and maps. Starting with the coat he's created for Cleopatra. It's got gold in it, which is a royal colour and purple. And, and silver comes in naturally because she's female. That denotes female. That denotes the actual magnetic aura of her being. And then this is the state that she's black and yellow is showing us dead. So the question is where? So the thing is that what we did to start off with is having got the code, we went over the map of Egypt, and worked our way up the Nile over it. And the only response we got from all the way up the map of Egypt was about here. We certainly didn't get any response up at Alexandria or anywhere around up there at all. When I enlarged that area up, bingo, it was the Valley of the Queens and the Valley of the Kings. And I thought, well, I didn't know that. I just went over the map. There was nothing on the map to say what it was. It's only when I went on Google Earth and enlarged it that it came up, you see. So I then, did some work on that by enlarging it up, which is what we do on Google Earth, and got my fellow remote viewers to go over it with the same code, and we found all these ley lines. So we got uh, one here, one here, and one here. Well, Alan's always a little bit out because he works his way across the map, but it takes a little bit of time to register, whereas we're much, much quicker. We're both hit on the same position. So we then fine pointed the map to here on the map, and the Valley of the Queens is up here, we're right up in there, the Valley of the Kings is right up there, and there's this causeway here down to the River Nile. So we then did what we call an on-site remote viewing by enlarging this up. So we get the entrance to the, uh, to the tomb here, and then we found there's a shaft down to there, and then a shaft down to a major 
uh, tomb down here where there was just one female burial, or two female burial as far as I know, and then uh, one was a maid and so one was her. And I then enlarged that up so that they could see whereabouts or how they could, there was like a road, a track going through, and I noticed all these undulations in the ground here. Now this is a Google Earth map greatly enlarged. So I contacted then Dr. Howis about this. I, I sent these things over and he said, oh, I'll send one of the lady archaeologists down to have a look when they're next down there. So I left it at that. And then, of course, the revolution came. He left Egypt and then the pandemic came and nothing happened. Then after the things had quietened down, I noticed this article in the Daily Mail. Egypt's lost golden city. I noticed the horizon there and this and I thought, that looks very much like the landscape that one would have had where we picked this up here because that area here, there you see, there is that all these undulations here are what's been excavated here and that is the tree line there and the buildings which you can see there. So what I did is I went on Google Earth and I got their map. I looked at this tree line here against the Google Earth map and basically rang round the trees that looked about the right height in the buildings and said that definitely is the site that we picked up. So I then remote viewed the whole thing again and I actually painted the strip up and it was very strong over here. We pinpointed exactly the same area there. What has happened is this vast amount of archaeology has taken place around here since. But the area that we're picking the burial chamber up is in this area here, which has, doesn't appear to have been dug out. But a lot of roads have appeared. The original buildings there, we can identify, and this building up here, which can pinpoint, and of course the tree line down here, pinpoints the finding zone. If I take this map here, the map contains her image. That's the point. She will respond. So if she was in Alexandria, then if I went over the map of Alexandria, the rod should cross over the map of Alexandra. So they don't, but they do for some reason, they do here. So I'll just go here and look, there's a response to the rods over that area of the map because that, that magnetic image that's on here is caught in the depth of that. And it's coming up like an ice cream cone. So by doing it the way we do it, we pick it up much easier. It's much harder to do it at the ground level. So basically we know that there is something there responding to her, her personal code. So we have reported uh, a Professor Alec Roberts who has just recently done an Egyptian visit called Egypt by Train. She visited a lady who came from Dominica, I think, who's doing Queen Cleopatra's burial in Alexandria. Well, look, a lot of Alexandria is under the sea because the sea levels are risen. So they found an underground tunnel which they had to dig down into. And they said, oh, it goes down under the sea. Well, of course, all major temple complexes and had and the Templars had them in the Holy Land and that's how they got a lot of stuff out whilst they were being invaded above the ground. You didn't know about these places, they were secret, but they were escape routes. So the thing is, so then, you know, they said, oh, we found coins or we found medallions to that um, plaques. Well, the thing is that you would, you would expect to find them all over the area if she reigned as a queen. Um, just as you've got plaques all over London for Queen Elizabeth. So the question is this, if she's supposed to be there, uh, when I then re-emailed the doctor about this, he said, oh, it can't possibly be there. He said, because it, to go down there, because it's the wrong dynasty. And I thought, well, basically, that's the very reason for putting it in the wrong dynasty. I said, because if the burial was at risk of being defaced, damaged or lost by an invader, which is exactly what was happening, then they would have spirited this away somewhere else. So what better way than to take it down to the Valley of Queens, but don't put it in the Valley of the Queens, put it somewhere outside, which will never be found unless you know some records where it has been put. And that's what we think we're finding, that it's been spirited away from where you would expect it to be and put down near where you might have thought it should go, but not exactly where it has gone. <laughs> no. Put it this way. In the context of other work that we have done regarding the late Nicola Bully, we coded her the same way as we did Queen Cleopatra. And she was dead. We agree that as from a certain date, although not from the original date, but from a later date. And we picked up her response in an undertaker's, which I believe you agreed with me on that Sunday the 5th of March. We tested the maps then, came back on the 8th 
of March and decided to have a look at these maps and found that the undertakers no longer responded. So I thought, well, that's interesting. But the churchyard did. So I then tried to find out when did this uh, funeral take place? Well, nobody was giving any information out about it whatsoever. And there was even a no-fly zone, apparently, over the, the day that the funeral did take place. And I later found that the funeral took place on the 6th of March. And that's why we picked up the fact that it no longer responded in the undertakers, but responded in the burial ground. So consequently, why would we be any difference here? Somebody there who can use these sort of rods should hold these colours, actually do what they call pointing. Pointing is when you hold the code and you stand, let's say, on that road up from the Nile and you hold the rod and you say, clean pad, and the rod, I'm turning this myself, the rod will then turn around in the direction of that energy. You then walk towards it and then if there's a deviation, the rod will go that and you move with it. Now, when the rod does this on you, you know you hit the spot below you. So what you then do is you get your other rod and you simply walk away. And then if you come back, then they should do this over that site. Now, OK, that's not going to be the entrance because we're talking about a tomb below. So you need to find the shaft and the shaft is going to be up in at one angle and then another chamber, and then another shaft to somewhat below the surface, which is normally about six feet, something below the surface. So what you do is you use green six, which is what we've done here, and you go over the area to pick up responses to tunnels or cave below the ground, and then you map them out with little flags as you go, and you build up a picture. And then basically you then follow that through. You should be able to find a shaft, as it goes along and then you should find a square and then you should find another shaft and then you find the big chamber let's say so you then want to find the entrance so you then go up to where the shaft is nearest or where it stops basically and then below you it's showing like a, a chamber you can do what's called counting down you kneel on the ground and then you count down and it might say three four five six feet then the rods cross so therefore you know so then you get your ground radar out that's all you've got to do. Instead of going all over half of the Sahara Desert, you go over where that has told you to go and have a look and then get your own radar out, see the square there, know the planks to lift up and then follow it from there. It would probably have to be dug out, you know. But the thing is that that's how to deal with something like this, using this to start off with to cut time and efforts down and then use science to fine tune. I'm not sure if there's a ground radar that can pick things up going down 100 feet or so, but that's how this system can be interused with modern technology. Basically. Hi folks, I hope you enjoyed that Queen Cleopatra segment. It is fascinating stuff, isn't it? The next segment that I wanted to include with this, although it's not to do with Cleopatra, I thought it relevant because it shows Peter abroad in the Kefalonia area where he wants to follow up on, on Robert Bittlestone's research. She wrote a book in 2005 and he wanted to see if he could get any response. So he went searching around from the tour operator guide to see if there was anybody on the island who could maybe help him or go along with him to uh, do a bit of research with this, which is what he did. So we'll hear the results of that. And they ended up throwing a, up a little bit more fascinating stuff, unexpected as well in the area. So it just goes to show the layers and levels that this work reaches. And I just thought that was interesting to share. And this is a video that I recorded in uh, early 2023, February to be exact. So I hope you enjoy this segment. And for those who would like to follow along with some of what Peter's doing, we're not going to do yet a one day workshop in either late August or possibly October. We're not sure yet where there'll be presentation in the first half of the day and the second half will be practical application. In the meantime, if people are interested, we'll be providing the event, the area to look at, along with the codes, and it would simply be for you to report back. If you wanted to be part of a, a loose group that would report back on the dowsing, and even if you're new, if you just want to test it out, because although I've been around it a long time, because I'm doing so much <laughs> other work, I don't always get much opportunity to test it, but even I get some 
very, very interesting responses on occasion. So for those who are interested, you can leave your information in the comments section. So enjoy this next short segment. And, and Peter, can you just explain exactly what well, we're looking at here? These are codes we use for archaeology and going over maps as well, just for straight burials, not identified to any particular person. So this is female, pink, white, silver, black and yellow. And male, pink, white, black and yellow. Silver goes only for female. So that we go over the maps and then we can pick up the burial grounds. So I just want to explain that you can also use these on site. So we used to go to Kefalonia a lot for holidays. And I spoke to the Tui lady. Is there anybody out on Kefalonia? I'd like to do some work on connected to Bittleston's search for Odysseus's palace. They found somebody called Yanis. And he said, well, come over to Luxury and been searching for us. So we'll do some testing there with your system. And maybe you can help us identify where the palace is. And there was uh, a guy with Yanis uh, and also the policeman. I was introduced to the policeman. He was one of the police for Luxury and explained what we're going to do. So uh, Bobby, Yanis and I got in a car and we drove down a road. I then used a code for Odysseus and the rod turned towards a hillside and they logged it and they said to me ah well now we want you to do something else please so they drove up the hill to the top of above luxury and they stopped the car in the middle of the road and he said um what can you tell us about this area there and i used one of these codes and i used my rods on the road and they crossed i said well i used this code and they crossed as i walked about i said yanis you've got a burial ground under this road he said that's right the farmers ploughing the fields each side have found human remains. So the road was cut through. We found a burial site on site with these codes. Are we so, talking about an ancient burial? Yes. Oh, yes. Bronze Age and Phoenician, that sort of thing. So uh, then went to another thing where they stopped on the road overlooking Luxury. I got, he said, what can you find here? So I got out the car, went over and I said, well, Yanis, I can't find any burials in the road here at all. He said, no, we're going to take you up there now and see what you can find up there. So we went out off the car, up this track, to a mound and went into a cave. They said, this is a Phoenician tomb. What can you find in here? So I went around and said, well, it's been obviously been searched by archaeologists. I said, but there's a pile of earth over here. I went over to the pile of earth and I said, Yanis, you've got a burial under the pile of earth. I said, there was nowhere else for them to put it, so it's still there. He said, that's right. <laughs> so he said, um, can you have a wander around and see what you can find? So I went out of the tomb and went and walked around and I found basically burial after burial up there and reported them. And he said, well, it's strongly suspected there are more tombs here, so we'll report your findings at more Phoenician tombs there. And I said, yes, and not only that, but I'm picking up bronze and leather and possibly gold artifacts in there, you know. So he said, now we're going to take you to another location. And this is what I'm talking about, this missing lady, basically. This is proving that this system works. And somebody in the law in that country was interested enough to want to study that and find the results. And so we went to this house. It was dilapidated. And there was a, a rusty old car in the front. He said, now, something happened here. The property would have been inhabited in 1999 by a Norwegian man and his wife. He was known to be a drunk, and when he had an affair with a young British woman, his wife left. Thereafter, the British woman and the man were never seen or heard of again. And during that time, an Albanian group on the island were known to have murdered several people. And the house has been left. I believe this was on British television donkeys years ago as a, a murder case on Kefalonia. He said, um, can you have a look round, see what you can find? I went round with my rods and I have a human blood code, red, white and purple, 971. Human blood picks it up. So I went round and I had a look at the patio and I got a response where there was a washing line thing coming out. And I said, Janice, I'm picking up blood under this patio here. He said, can you work out how many years ago? So I went holding the blood code. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the rods crossed. I said, Janice, about seven years ago, he said, that's right, that's when it happened. And we've never been able to find the body or anything, and the woman disappeared. But it was something to do with archaeology. We, we, we strongly feel that there was a problem here somewhere which uh, ruffled a few feathers. So when I got back to the hotel, had I been to the site and then got some big A4 sheets of paper, joined them up, I always go on holiday with paper and envelopes and I've got a great big packet of codes and everything, you know, with everything in it. And I laid the map out on the thing and I went over it and there was a wall next to the patio and there was an olive grove next to it. And I went over there and I picked the burials in the olive grove. 
so I reported it. <laughs> so the thing is, people can try and refuse that this system works, but it does work. That's the trouble, provided you, you've got the ability to do it. And when I provide these codes to other people, they can use them too. And it's people that don't like it or don't want to know about it because it undermines their forensic abilities, which they charge huge sums of money for. <laughs> Except this is also forensic. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's forensic in so far as geared to colours, to magnetic sensory... And it's values. repeatable. And it's repeatable, yes. Mm. But if we look at that famous case of the bomb detectors, where a guy was sent down in the old Bailey for selling bomb detectors that were supposed to be fraudulent, Geoffrey Crock was called as a witness for the defence with a military man, a royal engineer. He trained up thoroughly to give a thorough demonstration in the Old Bailey that this worked. And the thing is, he was never called to do it. But the guy was sent down, as I understand it, for enormously fraudulent price for the electronics that was in this thing because they were working, but they didn't need any of the electronics. That's the point. And what happened was that the message got round to the terrorists as well that these things didn't work, so they thought. So the military out there in Iraq didn't use them, and there was all the bombing started up again. And I blame people for having got that out into the public domain, because if they just kept quiet about it, quietly behind the scenes, people want a gizmo box attached to something, and this is where they fall down. In actual fact, the mine's doing the work, as we've shown this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Peter Vincent, our oh, dazzling yeah. detective. Over and out on oh, yeah. Thursday, 9th of February 2023. Yeah.